Greetings from Sweden and welcome to Everyday Mystic, an aid to your spiritual growth. My name is David and today I'm going to talk about why I put my faith in Jesus and why it's not what you may think it is. Why I don't believe that it is about believing in the exact right doctrines and theology. And I want to first start by talking about that I basically get two kinds of angry comments on my channel. And for obvious reasons, both of these kinds of angry comments cannot be right. One is basically that, oh, how can you even consider that there is some truth in Christianity? How can you believe in Jesus? You must be a brainwashed sheep that just follows without questioning. That is one of them. Another is that, oh, here are the exact right biblical doctrines. You have to believe this and you have to abide by this or you will go to hell for all eternity. And now I will go on to explain why I cannot believe in any of these perspectives, and of course both of them cannot be right. And by the way, when you evoke these kinds of angry comments, I believe that you must be doing something right, because you are basically triggering something in people's egos, that make them react in a certain way. And by the way, I want you to think a little about your own behavior in relation to how you act online. Think about this, what do you actually want to accomplish with what you communicate and how you communicate it? This is a very big key to understand how the ego operates and Basically, how your psychology functions with in relation to actually make free conscious choices. Now let me move on to the video. Our minds play tricks on us. And this is important to what I'm about to talk about next. And why it is so difficult when it comes to navigating our human experiences and understanding what is actually right and wrong in the world, what to believe in and what beliefs to discard. Basically, when our minds play tricks on us, we want to find evidence for the things that we already believe. Our brains produce thoughts about things all of the time and when we don't really pay attention to what, what is going on inside of our heads and when we don't question our beliefs, our thoughts, our motives, it's very easy to just adopt a certain belief and think that it's the right one because it is what gives us the most satisfaction, the, most, the best feelings, it makes us feel safe or whatever our personal motives are for believing a certain thing. And usually we are not as rational as we think that we are. We have our personal selective perception. We have our personal filters on that filter out certain information and take certain into information into ourselves and makes it part of our identity, you could say. And this is something that we need to be aware of when we approach the world, when we approach information, when we try to make sense of everything. That we have these personal filters, these personal biases. We want things to be the, the, the way that we think that we are because our brains, our egos don't like uncertainty. So if we have been raised a certain way, in a certain culture, with a certain societal programming, when we have acquired our personal fears, our personal desires, our personal wants and wishes for things to be a certain way, this will affect what information that we can take to heart and what information we decide to discard. 
And a very important question to ask ourselves here is, has religion been used to a religion been used to control people. It has been, of course, part in manipulation. And therefore, I have to be distrusting of dogmas and of everything that seems to be wanting to take away my personal freedom. But I also have to be very clear with that I have to ask myself, which freedoms are real, free, really freedom. And one thing that I come back to over and over again on this channel is that is sexual liberation truly freedom? And you have to understand a little bit about energies that run through our bodies and how we cre create energetic bonds with the, with the people that we interact with. To understand how this functions. As long as there is just this dogma that says that free sex is wrong basically because God says so. That doesn't really tell me much. But I want to ask you this. Do you think that sexually liberated individuals in general seem free to you? Because in essence... It is the absolute epitome of empty sensory gratification. And anything, whether it's sex or food or anything else that we become obsessed by, is something that creates a prison for us in our lives. It makes us unfree. It creates these invisible chains that we are tied to. Anything that creates compulsive behavior. Anything that we don't feel that we are fully in control of, control of and can make conscious free choices about is an invisible prison. So, it's important in this context to realize that what I'm talking about is not some authority coming up from above from society and telling us what we can and cannot do. I believe in the individual's absolute freedom to make any choices that they want to make, including choices that destroy them, and including choices that actually destroy other people around them as well, as long as these people are adults and make free choices themselves. So you are free to even drag other people that around, are around you with you, as long as these people are also making free conscious choices. But of course I want everyone to make the right choices, the choices that liberate them, that make them feel more free and more conscious about what they are doing and that don't make them bound to all of these things in the world that keeps our lives in being this invisible prison. And you all know really what these things are. They can, to a large degree, be reduced to distractions, empty sensory gratifications, and so on. Everything that sucks the meaning out of life. Everything that make us just live for survival and for empty gratification. These are the things that keep us chained, they keep us bound, and we need to recognize them and liberate ourselves from them. And this is truly something that I believe the Bible and the message of Jesus can help us with. But I don't trust authorities to tell me this. This must be a free choice that I am making. This must be a free choice that you are making as well. And now I want to ask you another question. And this is directed to you that say that, oh, you are going to hell if you don't believe this or that, or if you don't follow this doctrine. 
don't you think that this fear might actually affect your selective perception? If you feel that you need to believe certain things to get rewarded and avoid punishment, isn't this a very strong incentive to actually allow your mind to be programmed a certain way? And this is, if this is so, how can you really trust your perception? How can you really trust your way of understanding? How can you trust your own rationality? Because again, our minds play tricks on us. They do this. We cannot trust our mind's discernment when it comes to things. But I'm also open to that there is something that I don't understand here. But if you want to change my mind about things, you have to approach me in a conscious manner. If you just come to me and say that, oh, you should shut up and uh, just listen and obey to things that I'm telling you. If someone approached you in this manner, how would you react to this approach? Would you go, that, go like, oh, I'm just going to change my mind about this now because someone tells me that I have to? No, if you come and want to make a solid argument, you have to put some effort behind it. Don't just throw out this little mindless junk that uh, someone else has planted in your mind. Think about what you are actually saying and make a solid argument. And I promise that if you do this, I will take time to listen to you and respond to you in a respectful manner because it's all about reciprocity. But I cannot just trust your experience because again, our minds play tricks on us. So if you have these fears that affect you in a certain way, or you've been brought up in a certain way, or if you've gone through some sort of crisis that have ma has made you think and believe in a certain way, I cannot trust your experience. I don't even trust my own experience when it comes to this. One thing I do know is that God exists. I know that the decision to follow Jesus is the only religious decision that has truly brought me peace. As soon as I stray too far away from this, I start to feel worried, I start to feel hopeless, I start to feel that I have to carry this big burden on my shoulders, that I, with my personal, physical, little ego, cannot bear myself. So this is not a rational decision for me. And I think that any Christian that thinks a little about the biblical narrative will come to the conclusion that, well, you have this creation myth, you have this, and I'm not talking about it as a myth in the sense that it's not real. It's just a label that I put on it, uh, really an academic way of approaching it, you could say. But you have the creation myth, and you have the fall, and then you have Jesus coming to the world, dying on the cross and being resurrected on the third day to atone for our sins or actually to suffer in our place. I think anyone can see that on the surface this story makes no sense whatsoever. And yet if you really take this time to study the Bible, you will find out that there is something that rings true in all of this. And then you have all of these over 300 prophecies in the Old Testament that all point to Jesus. You have all of this hidden symbolism in all of these stories in the Old Testament that also point to Jesus. 
I'm not going to get into all of the details here, but I want to ask you this. When you dismiss the Bible, when you dismiss the biblical narrative, how much have you actually studied the Bible? I'm not saying that you have to go in and study the Bible, but just know what you're actually criticizing before you start criticizing it. I think this is a prerequisite for having a, a really serious argument about something. That you actually have taken the time to study it. So you know what you're actually criticizing. Because how can you otherwise have a serious argument about it? It's not enough to just criticize the behavior of people. To criticize the hypocrisy that you see within people. Or to criticize the mindlessness which many people naturally approach their faith with. Or for that matter, from the other perspective, to criticize the mindlessness that people approach lack of faith with. Because obviously, when I was six years old, I realized that there are no concrete evidence for God's existence out in the world, if you just approach God's existence with the five senses. So a six-year-old can come to that conclusion. And what I'm talking about here is, of course, the mindlessness that you can approach a lack of faith with, and think that you, in some way, possess some amazing insight that Christians don't possess about how life really works. But I want to get back to this now that, for me, belief and trust in Jesus is not a rational decision. I just know that I have explored so many things in my life, in my spiritual life. And to put my trust in Jesus is the only thing that has given me true peace. But I also want to be very clear that I don't know what this actually means. I am not comf uh, comf uh, comfortable at all with just believing in the creation myth and everything else around it in a literal sense. For me, it is more a diagnosis of our human condition. We live in a fallen world, in a fallen state, and we just have to look out into the world and be aware of our own condition to see that this is so. We can see that even though in, on some level we are one with God, we are divine creatures, there is also something thoroughly corrupt in us. I don't know exactly how this works. But we all have these little hang-ups, these little things that we don't want to admit to ourselves or other people. In the past, for example, I've been unconscious, unconsciously manipulative and I've excused all kinds of destructive behaviors towards both myself and other people in my life, I can honestly admit to that this has been the case for me. But as I said, I cannot just swallow classical Christian theology. And there are very concrete reasons for this. And it has to do in essence with spiritual awakening. I know that the world is so much more than what it appears to be when we approach it just through our five senses. And a lot of Christians actually believe that we only have our physical brains and our physical bodies and what we can look forward to after this life is just a physical resurrection. And I know that this is not the case. I've had experiences where I felt myself float outside of my body and becoming one with something infinite outside of myself. And I have had these experiences with how I have these blocked energies inside of my body 
and the more I let go of them, the more I come into contact with this energy field inside of my body that is connected to something so much higher than myself. So I am thoroughly 100% convinced that we are not just our physical bodies. And I can compare my experience with other people that are not Christians, that have not decided to follow Jesus, but that go through a similar spiritual awakening to the one that I am going through. So this is the dilemma that I have in my life, and I have to contend with this somehow. I cannot just choose to blindly follow one belief, but I cannot also not discard the feeling that I have when I decide thoroughly to follow Jesus and I cannot discard biblical prophecy and biblical symbolism and the coherence that I am most definitely seeing in the Bible and how I see the biblical stories and what is presented in the Bible that rings true somehow. But I have to look beyond the literal meaning. There is no other way for me to make sense of it. So I hope that I've made some sense to you today with what I'm presenting. I'm asking you, I am very much open to have an open discussion about this. But what I'm not particularly interested in is these hostile, very critical discussions where Someone just comes in and wants to assert their own opinion, assert their own worldview about things. This is not something I am interested in. I want to have open, friendly discussions and not just about the theological aspects, but about the situation in general that we have found ourselves in. Because I don't believe in division. I know that we have a common enemy in the tyrants that try to oppress us, but I don't want to see division with other regular spiritual people or religious people such as myself. I want to have unity and not division. And that is where I'm going to stop the video today. If you like this video, please leave a like, leave a comment and share the video on social media and other places. All of it helps the video to get noticed and thus the channel to grow. And if you haven't done it already, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so YouTube always notifies you of new videos that I put up, which I do every single day. And check out the description and the comment section for other things that me and my wife are doing. And other than that, just sincerely thank you for your time.